The Reserve Bank of Scots College proposed a decrease in the OCR by 25 basis points from 5.5 to 5.25% in the November 2023 Monetary Policy Statement. This aligns with the objectives of the Reserve Bank. We aim to maintain low and stable inflation between the policy target agreement of 1 and 3% and support the maximum level of sustainable employment. The aim is to utilise monetary policy to achieve long-term prosperity through controlling unemployment to its natural rate and meeting the conditions of the RBNZ dual mandate. Recently, New Zealand has experienced the boom phase of the business cycle at point X, associated with low amounts of spare capacity in production and thus high inflation. This is attributed to demand-side pressures stemming from the substantial government stimulus to ensure economic growth during COVID that has remained, along with a historically low OCR of 0.25% through 2020 and 2021. There has also been cost push inflation driven by COVID, very low unemployment of capital and labour resources of 3.4% and supply chain issues. However, these pressures are beginning to ease. An OCR of 5.5%, although successful in decreasing the inflation rate by 0.5% in the previous quarter, has oppositely affected economic growth and employment, as both fell 0.1%, highlighting the need to balance these economic factors in our decision. We agree with the RBNZ predicting a steady decrease in inflation from 6.7% over the next few quarters. This forecast is derived from the impacts of the current high OCR of 5.5%, as this disincentivizes speculative borrowing and encourages saving. Additionally, the news of New Zealand's technical recession will decrease consumer and producer confidence in growth for the future, decreasing demand pull inflation. However, despite these disinflationary pressures, it rem remains important to maintain a high OCR for an extended period to ensure inflation does not once again rise. This justifies our decision to decrease the OCR in the November MPS as opposed to the August MPS. In the short term, our forecast predicts a correlation between unemployment and inflation based on the Phillips curve with reduced economic growth impacting unemployment and due to proportionality between these two variables, we agree with RBNZ predictions in a steady increase in unemployment to between 5 and 6%. The decision to decrease the OCR in November to 5.25% aims to facilitate a soft landing in the long term through minimising prolonged decreases in economic growth and hence unemployment, preventing losses in net social welfare. This underpins the reason why we make the decision to decrease the OCR sooner than the Reserve Bank are expecting to especially considering the more long-term impact of monetary policy. Lowering the OCR is an inflationary policy as it reduces the return on savings and encourages borrowing by consumers and producers. Additionally, it detracts foreign investment, weakening the demand for the New Zealand dollar and additionally increasing the supply of the NZD, leading to a currency depreciation. This makes exports less expensive for overseas markets, while imports more expensive, increasing aggregate demand through increases in consumption, investment and the exports. A relatively smaller inward shift of the AS curve also occurs as imports of raw materials become more expensive. As disinflation occurs and the economy enters a recession, inflationary expectations will decrease. Consumers and producers will anticipate slower price increases and may delay their spending. However, the expectation of poor economic well-being during a recession may increase their marginal propensity to save rather than spending or investing. The decrease in consumer and investment spending will, will see a decrease in aggregate demand, hence lowering inflation. This justifies decreasing the OCR in November. By keeping the OCR at 5.5% for longer, the Reserve Bank communicates to New Zealand that we are not in the clear yet and must keep controlling spending. However, by the time of the November MPS, the technical recession will be enough alone to keep inflationary expectations low, allowing a decrease in the OCR. Post the border reopening, net migration has reached 65,400 in the 2023 financial year. Immigration affects both AD and AS, with the resulting effect on price level dependent on the magnitude of each shift. Skilled labour migration increases the supply of labour, thus correcting the current labour shortage through shifting the AS curve outwards, easing the effect of cost push inflation. Contrastingly, net migration can be inflationary due to the additional injections into the economy caused by greater levels of consumption. However, the current migration policy that New Zealand has adapted, targeting individual skilled labourers in contrast to families, ensures that the effects on AD will be less significant than the increase in AS. This is because the increase in AS from a skilled migrant outweighs the increase in AD from one person's additional consumption. Therefore, considering current high immigration, it is necessary to keep the OCR at 5.5% for another quarter to mitigate the short-term increases in AD.
However, as the disinflationary effects of net migration manifest, by the NPS in November, this allows for the OCR to be decreased without creating increases in inflation. The current account deficit in New Zealand is worrying at a record high of 8.9% of GDP, which is similar to levels we saw during the GFC. Comparatively pre-COVID, the deficit accounted for 2.9% of GDP. As explained, when we decrease the OCR, New Zealand exports will become relatively more affordable and imports will become relatively more expensive, and this will improve the current account deficit. Slowing overseas economic growth as well as relatively lower inflation and our main trading partners of China, Australia and the United States are worrying for net exports. As a result of these factors, the demand for New Zealand exports will decrease as they become less price competitive. As a result, making our exports more price competitive is something that is necessary to improve net exports and protect unemployment and well-being in many industries. This is why depreciation of the currency, making exports more price competitive and lowering the OCR is needed. There are domestic risks that could impact the OCR decrease come November. The general election is on October 14. No matter the elected government, there are likely to be changes in AD and AS that will need to be considered once government policy has been implemented, and this could change the timeline of decreasing the OCR. As well as this, the government may change the mandate of the Reserve Bank, more specifically on the role of maximising sustainable employment. Thus, what we have to prioritise at our Reserve Bank may change, leading to us potentially keeping the OCR at 5.5% for longer. We have considered global risks in our decision to decrease the OCR. Economic growth may fluctuate in many of our trading partners, and as such, we are often subject to unexpected changes in global economic growth, which can quicken or delay a change in the OCR. We must consider political influences on the economy, including events such as conflict in Ukraine. Events such as this can increase import prices, cause imported inflation, and delay an OCR decrease. To summarise, the Reserve Bank must keep a close eye on the domestic and global environment. We must remain cautious to maximise the well-being and prosperity of our people.